Hi, I'm Lindsay Moss and I'm a K-6 art educator from Yorkville, Illinois and a writer for The Art of Education. I'm really excited to be here with you today to share with you the strategies that I'm using for my fall fundraiser to differentiate so that I meet the needs of all the students in my classroom. So I've been lucky to do an Art to Remember fundraiser for the last four years because it's dramatically increased my budget. I have a very supportive school district, but no matter how much they love the arts, there's never enough money for all the exciting supplies that I want for my kids. So I've turned to Art to Remember for four seasons in the fall to help that budget grow. And so when I heard that they were putting some exciting items into the Art Ed Now swag box and were looking for ideas for a fall lesson plan, I jumped at the chance to show how I changed my lesson to fit every single student in my classroom. So if you're not familiar with Art to Remember, let me tell you a little bit about the process and how it has worked at my school. My students create a piece of artwork in my art room and Art to Remember sends some labels so that organization will be easy. When the artwork is completed, my students' families have the option to order their art online or through a traditional paper form. They can order a variety of keepsakes like a necklace, uh, keychain, notebooks, coffee mugs, or even water bottles. They make excellent gifts and the students love to show off their beautiful work to their friends and family. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about how to produce some of that beautiful work. And any type of demonstration is more fun when it's interactive. So if you were one of those first 1,500 lucky people to get a swag box from The Art of Ed Now, I think that you should go ahead and gather the following materials. Your semi-moist watercolors in a set of 24 from Jack Richeson. And then you're also going to need for this project some basic things like a Sharpie, paper, pencils, brushes, and water. If you didn't get the swag box, that's okay. Just grab your own watercolors and you can follow along. Go ahead and pause the video so that you can gather those things and we'll meet back here to get started. Welcome back. So now that you've got your materials gathered, here's what we're gonna be doing for today. My fall fundraiser project this year is based off of one of my most favorite fall experiences, going to the apple orchard. I love taking my daughters on a crisp autumn Saturday afternoon to pick apples and have cider. And that really inspired me to create this project for my students. But not all of my students are the same. At the elementary level, they have a wide variety of abilities, so it's important that this project is tailored to fit everyone's needs. So as we're working today, I'm gonna show you four ways you can differentiate this project to make sure that it reaches all of your learners. So we've got our supplies ready, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start sketching out the apple drawing. So for my youngest learners, the introductory concept that I want them to know about drawing is that drawing comes from the imagination. So like a traditional fundraiser lesson plan, for those students, I would go ahead and start with guided drawing or drawing something like the basket and the apples in this picture. So I would demonstrate for my kids how to start sketching out the basket that's going to hold my apples. And of course, I always tell them to use a whisper pencil to draw really lightly so they can erase their mistakes because mistakes are just part of art. And to go ahead and indicate where that table is going to go. Then I can encourage them to add some texture by putting the edges onto the basket. And of course, they don't have to follow that design. They might want to use their own design like polka dots or stripes or what have you. So for my youngest learners then, I would ask them, what shape an apple is, and then I'm sure they're gonna answer with things like circles or ovals, and so we can go ahead and do some guided drawing where they start to sketch that out onto their paper. But remember, that's not a one-size-fits-all project. We want other kids who are a little bit more advanced to have some challenge to their project too. So the second way you could differentiate is not by doing just guided drawing, but encouraging them to have some of their first observational drawing experiences. And this apple project is perfect for that because apples are an inexpensive option for a fall still life. So what I plan to do is purchase some apples for my students to look at. I'll place them right on the desk and so the students that are cognitively ready to start looking and drawing can examine the apple and we'll start talking about well what shape do you actually see does it dip in there is that shape really round or do you see it poking out a little bit in other areas 
And some students might be more comfortable with this first version and other students might be more comfortable with the second version. But it's going on in the same classroom at the same time, differentiated for all learners. So now I'm gonna have my students continue and finish out the drawing using whichever method they were most comfortable with. Drawing from their imagination or drawing from observation. And then, once they're done with that drawing, I'm gonna encourage them to use a black Sharpie marker to trace over their final design, creating that dark contrast that makes a really bright, beautiful picture that's perfect for fundraiser products. Okay, once you've got your sketch done and outlined to create that contrast with the Sharpie, it's time to break out the watercolors. Again, if you were one of those lucky first 1,500 people, Art to Remember has provided you with these awesome semi-moist watercolors from Jack Richeson. Of course, there are two levels because it's 24 colors, so don't forget to open the whole thing. What I would do before I begin is remind my students of basic watercolor skills. The one thing that I think really helps them when we're talking about using watercolors and a brush, I like to remind them about petting a dog because if you rub a dog back and forth, it always gets up and runs away. So I tell my students, you paint just like you're petting a dog, you move the brush in one direction. I'd also remind them that if you are going to paint adjacent areas or areas that are next to each other at the same time, your watercolors might run together and not leave the color that you had intended. So I would probably advise them to start with an area like the basket first, and then maybe move up to the background, then the apples, then back down to the foreground. So that way they have a chance to let each area dry before they're painting the spot right next to it. These are fabulous watercolors. They're really bright and you can get some very cool effects with them. So now that the painting is complete, the watercolor painting, I would give it a chance to dry and here comes the third option for differentiating for your students. If you have some students that are ready to learn about value, you can push this project just a little bit further by pointing out how a light source might make a highlight and a shadow naturally on an apple. For my youngest students, I like to turn the lights off in the art room and use a flashlight so they can see the reflective quality of the light source much more easily. And then, because these paints came with some excellent white watercolor and some dark black, I would show them how to add in a highlight and some darker areas like a cast shadow onto their project. So some of my advanced students can go ahead and do this while everybody else is finishing up with their watercolor. Now, there's of course in every class a couple students who are looking to get pushed even further. So if you have some really gifted or talented students or you're looking for an upper elementary fall fundraiser project, one great option would be to take this idea of the apple still life and push it into something like a landscape. So for example, you could have them draw out something in perspective, introducing the idea of one point perspective, but still incorporating the apples, and then have them paint it with the watercolors to get another beautiful product that you could use for your fundraiser. So once we've got these completed beautiful artworks, all the hard work is done. All you have to do is put your Art to Remember labels on the back of each artwork and send them off to the company. They take care of the order forms and the ordering process and ship all of the beautiful products back to your school already pre-sorted by class. My kids are so excited the day that those boxes come in and they help me pass them out. So the whole process is relatively easy to me as a teacher. 
I hope that this lesson plan is one that you can use to differentiate and reach all the kids in your classroom this fall. And I also hope you really enjoy these watercolors from Art to Remember found in your swag box. Thank you for having me at Art of Ed now.